First thing is we got the uh, clutch side cover off here, as you can see, to expose the inner workings here. And uh, basically the first thing we need to do is tackle the uh, primary, the clutch and the primary drive. Now, I did it actually backwards, but uh, take off the primary drive nut and, uh, and gear. And uh, this is a little bit different here because the uh, nut for the uh, primary uh, drive gear off the crankshaft is actually the gear that drives the oil pump. And so it's got threads in here, and it requires a, uh, a special socket to fit on there and take that off. And if you do it now, you can, uh, it's easier to hold the clutch assembly when you're trying to loosen this nut. There's also a lock washer behind it that you've got to bend a tap, and then it just slides off and it's keyed onto the crankshaft there. Now moving in a little closer here so you can see for better clarity. This is your clutch, which... A lot of people don't understand actually how these work uh, when they're doing a clutch adjustment and they have some lurching or um, the, the clutch seems a little sticky or they don't understand you know why they can't find neutral real good. Well this is honestly, as, the, as you can see these two halves rotate independently of each other. This part is driven by the crankshaft by the pinion uh, nut here or uh, gear. While this part, the inner hub, is attached to the transfer case that then directs the power out the counter shaft to the chain to the rear wheel. And actually how this works is there's some little springs here. You have to remove all these. Uh, I've partially disassembled this for clarity. These are what holds everything together when, when, the, when the clutch is out. And this is called the pressure plate and it's holding all the clutch plates together. If you remove that, and I've already removed the uh, steel and fiber plates, which the steel plates are driven off of the hub, while the fiber plates are driven off of the basket. And when they're smashed together, the friction holds these two to spin as a unit. Now, when the clutch releases, there is a rod on the other side of some sort that pushes through this shaft and pushes this in and out. What this does is moves the uh, pressure plate in and out to release the pressure off of the plates to allow these two parts to spring freely. For example, when the engine's running, the clutch is going like this, but if you're stopped at a stoplight, the hub is stationary. And this simply just slides right out. And if I push on the rod, you can see it kind of come... Well, no, you can't. But there's a rod down in there that pushes on this to make it go in and out. Next thing to take this part is to take this nut off. Now to get this nut off, of course this is going to want to spin on you. Using an air impact wrench and a quick blip will break this loose. If you don't have that, there is such thing as a clutch holding tool and there's different styles but it'll hold the hub so you can use a regular uh, ratchet wrench. And then there's also probably going to be some wash, uh, some lock washers or spacers, so remember which way they go, and and that's how I like to line things up, is kind of how they, you know, then you can then you can just pull off the hub. There's usually going to be a spacer behind there, so don't watch so that doesn't fall out and fall on the ground. And then we can just take the hub off, and um, as you can see, there's a, there's a bushing in here, there's some grooves to let some oil in, and then there's also a bushing here. This is what lets these shafts uh, move independently of each other, and there's some oiling grooves there. And then also there's going to be some type of a gear, usually some type of a gear behind here, or it drives right off of the primary gear, that these gears for the kickstart. And there's a ratcheting mechanism behind here. When you kick it, it kicks these into place, turns this, turns that, and with the clutch out, of course, turns the engine, and you're able to start it. Okay, now that we got the... Uh, clutch basket off, so, uh, one of the little modifications we're going to do is in between each one of these fingers where the uh, fiber plates uh, run. This is not too bad, but on most bikes you'll notice a little bit of wear. I mean, I can see where they were where they were touching. There's just a little bit of surface rust there and, and a little bit of a wear mark, but I can't really feel anything. But you might notice some grooves. Now, if they're excessively grooves, 
grooved. Uh, this is going to be needed to be replaced, the clutch basket. And this particular one, as you can see, is actually riveted together. So a, a new one, you would have to either uh, get these rivets out and the new one will come with new rivets or you get this whole assembly. Uh, d different bikes, some of these, this is all steel. This basket's all steel. And some are aluminum. Some are aluminum and they have some hard facing in there. It, there's just different des designs. I mean, obviously aluminum's lighter. Uh, this is a lot of rotating mass, but uh, this also, with this engine, because it's a big bore, um, this mass actually kind of <laughs> helps the flywheel effect. But for most race engines, uh, you know, you kind of want to make sure this is as light as possible, but it's still durable. Anyways, what we're going to do here, and it's a little trick that I've uh, picked up over the years, is I'm going to just polish up and clean up the, wear, the surfaces where the uh, uh, fiber plates run and uh, shine them up, re make them real shiny and smooth, and that way the plates won't catch. When you release the clutch and one plate, uh, when the plates can't move a little bit to, to release their friction to allow you to change gears or stop at a stoplight or when you're first starting out, when you click it into first gear and you hear that clunk, well that means one of the plates is, is stuck or there's a little bit of friction here and the transmission's still spinning a little bit even though you're stationary and there's some drag in here. And well I want to try to eliminate that. And, but you can only do this if the fingers are like this one, where they're uh, really clean and not really worn. If it's bad, if they're already, if you can feel some ridges in there, you, you can't do this. You, you're going to have to uh, replace it. Because while you could file down those rid ridges, or grind down those rivet ridges, you're going to open up the space between each one of these fingers here, which is, is going to cause a lot of clutch noise and that's going to be the plates are, are going like this in between here and clanking back and forth. A lot of older bikes had a lot of clearance and that was a common complaint back in the 60s is while you're sitting there idling you'd hear kind of a clank 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 and all that was was the plates going back and forth. They, back in the day when manufacturing tolerances weren't as stringent they put a lot of clearance in there so when you release the clutch it actually released and not lurched forward when you put it into gear and that causes stress on the transmission and everything. So that's one of the things we're going to do here with this to kind of improve clutch action on this bike.